is a Bulldog Radio podcast. The Ferris State Bulldogs have upset the nation's number two ranked team. Wide open, Taylor is going to take this one to the house. Touchdown, Bulldogs! It's the MVSP Season 4, Episode 41, Brandon, the big 4-1 pass of episode 40, last one. Man, do we got a great episode for you guys on deck. Got an extended Fair State Sports Report coming, reviewing everything that happened over the weekend. So many sports are coming, especially with the closing of winter sports. Now spring sports kind of coming in. We got a lot to talk about, as well as NBA All-Star Weekend went down. But before we get into that, Brandon, what else do we got? We got a special interview. Our buddy Sean Sneed, many of you know, uh, has stopped by the show and talking about his success getting an extended and advanced role with Ferris State Hockey as well as with the Grand Rapids Griffins. You guys will love his story and can't wait for him to tell it on today's exclusive interview. Absolutely. So without further ado, let's swing it. Now joining us in studio, Director of Hockey Operations, Public Relations Intern for Grand Rapids Griffins, and Head Statistician Intern for Ferris State Athletic Man and Many Hats, Sean Sneed. Welcome to the show, brother. Hey, buddy. How you doing? That's you, Brandon. Yeah, it is me. <laughs> We're so glad to have you, Sean, here as we are making this a great interview. But first question for you here, Sean, uh, getting involved in Ferris State Athletics, obviously with us in Sportscom, what draw you to hockey in the first place and what made you want to work for the athletic staff? Yeah, I mean, I grew up playing hockey. I was a hockey player my entire life. I learned how to skate when I was like three. And so it was in my blood. And coming to Ferris, I it was like a just a random day, probably in August, right before I came Dr. A sends out those big blasts. I was like, why not? I was like, I, like, I don't know if they want a freshman because I, I know it's, I thought interns would be supposed to be like older. And she's like, well, I think you want someone to be like a four year, not a one hit wonder. I was like, all right, emailed it, lied. Rob emailed me back probably the same day. He's like, hey, can you fill this out? And I was like, sure. And then it just went off from there and it's been a, it was been a great decision. Yeah, and especially for you, I mean, now, especially going into hockey operations and stuff like that, you've already had kind of a relationship with Bob Daly and stuff. Yeah. Can you talk about kind of that process of getting that job and how that was going from, you know, working from Harrison and now yeah. going into Jack or Daniels? Yeah, I can't thank Harrison and Rob enough. I mean, since my freshman year, I've got to know them quite well. I mean, we sometimes got each other nerves, but that, it <laughs> happens to everyone. But we're professional, we're great friends, and I view them as a friend, and it's been fun. And the way the... I, my relationship with Daniels, like you said, I've known him for quite a while with my grandpa. And, but I asked, I actually asked Daniels to just interview him for like an assignment. It was like a leadership assignment. Like, yeah. he's been here for 30 years. He's got to know some stuff. And he's like, oh, you want it? Would you be open to a leadership position? And I totally expected to be like, oh, maybe part of the leadership group. I didn't expect it to become what it is now. And he emailed me. He set up a meeting with him and uh, Coach Kaufman. And I got asked a couple of questions. They said, oh, would you be open to doing this? And I was like, going crazy like, of course but it's been great so far yeah absolutely and some people probably have heard the the term director of some sort of operations yeah. in sports what does that necessarily entail like what's your day-to-day -day job when right. you're on assignment there with the hockey team yeah so i try to help out every day and i think next year next year i'll be doing a lot more this year they wanted me to get my fleet wet they told me they didn't want to overwhelm me but i'm up to the challenge whenever they need it but pretty much every day i after every weekend, I update these stats sheets. So um, Coach Daniels has these Excel sheets on paper. So he's kind of old school, which I respect. But it's so like I go through, he's got like a plus minus sheet, a shot sheet, uh, goals, points, assist, all that, penalty minutes, even strength, whatnot. So I update those after every series. And then we have these penalties, I mean, uh, excuse me, these summaries of the game. So we have a year to date one. We have a plus minus one for the uh series so this past weekend obviously it wasn't the best so we have the one sheet that will have even strength penalty power play and then all situations totaled up and so that's what i do pretty much every sunday or monday whenever i really want to do it or get to it and then every day tuesday wednesday thursday i have a meeting with the coaches in the morning and then this week i think i have a senior senior meeting because obviously it's saturday but it's a lot of number crunching um and then right now I'm planning the hockey banquet with Jim Crank and Crankers. I've been trying to get the menu from him, getting uh, responses back from attendees, mainly parents, some Blue Line Club members. But it's it's really a a new day is a new challenge every day for, with this job, and it's it's great. And I'm just looking forward to next year. Where I can get 
um, just jump in the pool and just have a lot of fun with it. Yeah. Calling the big shots already. How yeah. much higher can you get? Yeah. I, I always tell them, I just, I love helping out and like, I hate leaving the rink. I, I find it's like a second home to me and I hate, like, I, I just hate it. And I, I wish I could like work there every day of my life, Monday through Sunday. And just, I, I'd have fun. Like when people say you're never going to work a day in your life, if you love what you do. And I truly love what I do. And like, you guys have been fun to work with. And I hate like, it's sad knowing that I'm going to my senior year. And like a lot of these kids I've known since my sophomore year are leaving. It's sad. And so. Dang, I'm going to cry I'm on saying, man, You're going to make us cry. We're going to have to like stop recording <laughs> yeah. or something like that. But especially now, I mean, you're also working for Grand Rapids Griffins. Yeah. I mean, how much stuff is really on your plate? Oh, it's really got to add yeah. up, especially on those weekends where, you know, you might have to take an yeah. absence from the Griffins to work for yeah. Ferris or one of the two vice versa. You know, right. how has that kind of been able to manage that busy schedule now with so much on your plate? Yeah, it, it takes some uh, time management, which is great because obviously that's a... Uh, skill everyone should have. And that's really taught me how to manage my time, especially. Yeah. Like you said, I've taken, I'm um, taking my last absence this year. Cause I want, I want to be here for senior night and I want to help out where I can. And I know I don't want to like put people in a bad situation. Cause I know I have a busy schedule. I don't want to like, I know Brody wants to be a, a play by play guy. And I don't want to take him away from being color. So I'm trying to do what I told Rob I would do. And it's been tough. I know there's a couple weekends I, this week. I'm going to do it again, but when we uh, played Grand Valley in the regular season for football, I had a game Friday uh, at the Griffins. And so I drove up after the game, stayed in my apartment, went to the game for a little bit. Then I had to drive back down for Grand Rapids. So it's definitely been uh, tiring, but it's worth it. I mean, it's hockey and I love it. Like I said, I love going to the rink. I love watching hockey. So I really can't complain because I know there's some other jobs that could be worse for me, but it's definitely, it's not very much I'm tired and I'm looking forward to next year where I don't have to tell Rob that I can't be places because I hate doing it. I love just being with him and you guys. And so it's been tough for me. But for the, sure, man. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this last, this last weekend. I mean, I wish we had home playoffs. I mean, we still can, but I'm looking forward to not telling people I can't be there anymore. Yeah, absolutely. We all want to be available for others. And that truly is great from you, Sean. I know, yeah. especially when working with you, I know you sacrifice a lot and it's really, really just a pleasure from us as well. Yeah, um, but it. obviously with the two difference of, of levels, obviously between the Griffins and uh, Ferris overall between hockey um, at collegiate and professional levels, what's the other differences that you see um, in the organizations as far as the whole process and really how a lot of these games are done and differently at the college level as opposed mm -hmm. to the pros? Yeah. So it's, it's definitely much different. I mean, obviously the Griffins, well, something I noticed is the uniforms, uh, all the interns are in, uh, khakis and a black pullover with the, the Griffins logo. I mean, at, at Ferris athletic events, we're all in something Ferris wise it may, might not be the same like sweatshirt or pullover, but I definitely, that's the first thing I noticed is how professional we have to be. And like, we're, we're dealing with scouts, coaches, professional hockey players, even though like like some of these kids are, or some of these players are the same age as me. Like I'm 20 and some of these kids like 20, 21, even we have a 19 year old on the team. And so really my day, my day schedule going to a Griffins game is somewhat similar to going to a Ferris game. I arrive a couple hours early for Griffins. I'm there a little earlier, but it's definitely the uniforms with the one that I really picked out. I I've been fighting Rob with this because I know my freshman year he said, "Oh, we'll get a shirt for everyone," and that's what I really want because I think that shows professionalism. Rob, Rob's mm -hmm. been promising that for, for about <laughs> three know, years. Exactly. We've, been trying, we've, been yeah, trying. we've been trying. We've been trying. So that's what I wish we could do. I mean, hopefully next year I'm really gonna try to push Rob, see if I can like convince him to do it. But that's the one big thing. So was I I've been told like I never I haven't got to travel like to a tournament, but I know like Bethany went to. Quincy for volleyball. Mm. And she said every intern was khakis in a college shirt. Mm. And that's why I wish we had, because it shows professionalism. It shows we're a team. Cause like, I mean, like I wear, I wear a gold sweatshirt. Joe, you could wear a red sweatshirt. Brandy, you could wear like a black sweatshirt. So like, mm -hmm. you, I mean, it looks like we're just students, but we're like, but we know we're a team. So I wish we like had it because we're we are a team, and I wish we could symbolize that by wearing like a pullover or something. Yeah, maybe get a credential with our face on it. That would be kind of <laughs> cool. Not gonna lie, I don't think even mine has my name on it. Do I care? No, but it'd be kind of cool to <laughs> yeah. have something like that. And, I respect that. And I know, especially being a part of so many teams, the most important one is obviously the rubber puckies. Oh uh, yeah, the, oh, the, yes. the big yes. Adult hockey league. Oh, I mean, yeah. you and me are on the teams. Oh, I mean, yeah. what's that like to be able to you know get tricked out in some of that bulldog hockey gear and be able to kind of 
stunt on us. Uh, <laughs> kind of that poverty hockey gear we got in the beer league. <laughs> That's not my goal to stunt on you guys at all. I just, it's um, a shameless flex really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know I knew right away I was going to get like, and I, I know it's all love with you guys. And so I know it's like, I knew I was going to get like made fun of. And I'm saying in quotation marks because I know it's just jokes. And yeah, like, yeah. I knew it was common. I knew like playing in Ferris in their rink on their home ice. I'm like, I knew I was going to get something. And it's like, I just, I reached out to him. I was like, Hey, I mean, it'd be cool. And then like, they like, he's been, uh, the equipment manager, Ben Muma, if I'm saying his name, right, I believe it's that, but I've heard everyone pronounce it differently. And he's been great to me. And I wish I could like, we should, the rubber puckies, honestly, we should get some all red helmets and red gloves. doesn't matter what it is. We got, we got to make it. Yeah, well, yeah. You can pull some strings now that you got a little bit more leeway. <laughs> I wish I do it. If we, if we had like an equipment sale, dude, oh, I'd love that. But yeah, it's, it's nice to be decked out. And, but the most important thing is the, the duck on the front of the jersey. Absolutely. Yeah. Got to represent. Oh yeah. We Final, got, hey, we're finals bound, man. Yeah, we're finals bound. We're playing the president of blue line club. So we're, we got to win. Cause I got to give them grief now. Oh, yeah, we're going to the yeah. ship. Yeah, we're going to the ship. Brandon, you got to come by. I think it's eight o'clock on Sunday for eight the game one. Everybody's got to be there. Yeah, I was going to actually be there yesterday, but then I got roped into a work thing, and uh, uh, so I had to stay back home for a little bit. But I heard about it on over a text. I think it was actually Ryan there. I think no, maybe it was you, Sean, that I heard it from, and I was yeah. like, "Heck yeah, boys, let's oh, go!" Yeah. So we got big, big series coming up. Finals, big Tilly. best of three. You got to make it there, Brandon. All right, big I think Tilly. Well, let's get the whole podcast fam to come and watch. Oh, that I would be something. Everybody, cool. man, that'd yeah. be cool. So, but Sean, we won't waste any more of your time. Final question for you. What's been your favorite thing about being here at Ferris State and being a Bulldog? Oh, that's a, that's a tough question. My favorite thing is the people. I mean, my freshman year, I didn't know many people and COVID obviously, uh, stunted that. And from my freshman year, I only knew one intern and it was, it was just, there was two interns running like the show, I guess is like putting it on, but I think that my favorite part is the people I've met. I mean, everyone's been great to me. I've met a lot of friends and I didn't expect to meet this many people. So it's, it's great that it exceeded my expectations and I've made friends. That I hopefully will last a lifetime. And it's been a, it's a, been a pleasure working with y'all. Cause I know you guys are graduating well uh, before me, but it's been a, it's been great meeting all you. Heart emoji. Yeah. Hearts, hearts signing hearts. out. Thank you so, so much, Sean, for coming on. Yeah. I mean, we love working with you too, but thanks for coming on brother. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Big thanks to Sean for stopping by for the interview as now we get into bad, the Fair chip. State Sports Report. And Joe is now... I'm about being a chip. Yeah, you haven't snack time apparently. So, which does sound pretty good, not going to lie, as it is just past lunchtime as we're recording this. Which, by the way, thank you all for making sure you're subscribing here uh the MBSP on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to the show, or WBRN as well. Made the weekend really special, apparently. Got a lot of good viewers. So glad Huge. you guys tuned in to that. We're Huge. making sure we keep that going over the next weeks, months, and hopefully even years to come. We never know we'll where see. the show may well, my show. My get a job with Ferris after graduation. We'll yeah, see. we need to get Joe on uh, on the bandwagon too. We can get the whole crew together. And I think that was the biggest thing I took away there before that interview with Sean was like, you really knew with our group, we're a pretty tight knit group. But when you kind of look at how the athletics communication staff, the sports comm students, mm -hmm. all of the, the staff workers are all bound into this community, it's like, man, we have a lot of really I mean, you, good connections. You don't, you don't really see that uh, really with a lot of like, probably college athletics. Because no. There's not really anybody, I feel like, in our like group where... I don't like know on a personal basis and that's like tough to do, especially with how many people that are in all of those facets of where we're at with our athletic programs. Can't beat it. Sports com you baby. That's what we're trying Sports to make com, this yeah. place. Hey, we can do it. We I probably could honestly. Yeah. Cause I remember looking in when I was a first applying to schools and I was looking around at a lot of the other coming like schools around the nation that have sports communication. There's, there's not some, that many. There's one of the top ones, man. Yeah. There's not that many around comparison to sports management, mm. which has been overblown by a lot of other colleges in my opinion, but that's my hot take for the day. Anyway, Ferris State Sports Review, we go. We start on the hardwood Saturday sweep for men's and women's over the Lake Superior State Lakers. Men's avenge a home loss from earlier on this season. Women now have made it, I believe, six years in a row 
sweeping the Lakers in that series. But for real, starting off, yeah, I did Dang. look that up. You can find that on the Ferris State Torch on Wednesday. A little hint, hint action for you there in my recap. Shout but out. starting with the women's game, 75 67, the finals. Lakers got off on a really good start, especially on senior day in their home gym. Outlet us 19 to 13, but we took care of business, especially at into halftime and closing it out 19 10 run um, to finish out the fourth to get the victory. Uh, obviously, Chloe Idoni dominance once again. She's been playing some fantastic basketball uh, over the last couple of weeks and even month. Um, definitely losing to Shauna early on was tough, but I thought Grace Sullivan did a heck of a job filling in, uh, especially for what this team needed down the stretch defensively and really controlling the tempo. And then even offensively, she was able to fill it as well. Yeah, that was a huge thing. I, you know, and especially as as time has gone on, we've kind of lost a lot of players. I mean, we only had two subs coming in this game, basically. Uh, and and I and when you get later on in the in the year, it's tough because you kind of rely on your subs to keep you in the game, especially you know if your starters go down like Deshauna did, or you know somebody needs a break. And when you have you know, people lacking in that, in that ability to just have two, uh, when you go into a game, it really changed up the game plan, but for the team to really stay strong and solid. And, you know, even with, you know, one sub for the majority of the game, you're still able to play really well and really control the ball and, you know, shut down a lot of the attacks on the opposite team. That's a big thing to look forward to, especially as the postseason is coming close. Yeah, absolutely. Some final stats from that game. Chloe Idoni, 25 points, nine rebounds. So close to that double-double mark. Kenzie Bowers, 15 points, nine of them coming in the fourth quarter, as well as L. Irwin finishing with 13 points on four of eight shooting, eight boards for her as well. Mallory McCartney, nine points, as well as seven assists, which I checked a stat from uh, over this last weekend from her career stats. She already eclipsed the 1,000 career points mark as a Bulldog, but now she has officially hit the five. 500th assist on the weekend, and she has 499 rebounds, which will mean Dang. that she will be one of the first in recent memory. And I looked at a lot of the years in past, and I couldn't find anybody. So if somebody can find one um, from the archives that has done it since then, so we can put a number next to it, be the first Bulldog in quite some time with 1,000 points, 500 boards, 500 assists. I mean, that should Jeez, really dude. show the eclipse of her career. Dang. Fantastic stuff. Talk to him a little bit. Jeez. I mean, That's it's incredible. Wild. Yeah. And I asked her about this, of course, um, for the, the the newspaper recap. And she said that it was a really cool feat that she knew that she was close in the assist, but didn't know how many rebounds that necessarily she had um, being close to that mark. But I mean, at the end of the day, she said it as probably any other um, athlete would. And I don't think that should take away from Mallory as a person, but at the end of the day, She's focused on getting the wins. And I think that's what makes her so special as individual stats are cool, but you can tell the way that she really conducts herself on the floor as that floor general, as that team leader, that it's all about the team, team, and the team. And I think that's what makes her such a fantastic player. Um, but she really led the way with this team and has really done a great job, um, especially getting up really us back on track. We lost two in a row going into this game, and this was a big win on Lake State senior day um, and certainly one that they are going to use as momentum going into a big weekend ahead, but I mean, we didn't shoot necessarily the best from three point range. Eight for 36 was the final stat yeah, line. Tough sledding right there. But I mean, tough sledding. they had a lot of looks. I watched part of this game and they had a lot of great looks and some of them just weren't falling and it was just the nature of just how of that basketball nights. game was going, but they did a great job fighting, scrapping. They turned over the Lakers plenty of times. were able to get points off of turnovers. Those 16 points off turnovers were crucial in those momentum moments um, as well as you saw the fast break definitely um, was on display. They were getting out in transition. They were able to find some open shots, and I think that was really key. And not even though they didn't all fall, I think you could have seen if they would have fall, you would have saw a 15, potentially 20-point win if those shots would have been down. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, it's at that, at that point, it's quantity over quality. You know, you're just trying to get as much as you can, and especially you're still hitting eight threes. That's still 21 points from beyond the arc. So that's one thing that can really push you over. And I mean, especially with Lake State, they went six for 17, which – better percentage, but still less threes that they made. So it's a big time win for us, especially as you said, last weekend, the GLIAC play, you really want to have some momentum going into this one. And we're going to go on the GLIAC scoreboard right now, Thursday, February 16th, Purdue Northwest fell to Michigan Tech and a pretty much big blowout up in Houghton. 
Is it Houghton or Houghton? I always say it's Houghton. I say Houghton, but I could Houghton be wrong. Houghton it is. 80 to 46, the Huskies down the pride. Davenport fell to Wayne State 64 to 52. Grand Valley kept it rolling 72 53 victory over Saginaw Valley. And Parkside lost to Northern Michigan 73 to 67 up in Marquette. And then Saturday, Parkside took out Michigan Tech. They lost by 10, 68 to 58. Saginaw Valley, big win over Davenport, 104 to 59 on their senior day. That's a pretty much big blowout. Hate to see that for uh, any Davenport fans there. Northern Michigan took on Purdue Northwest on Saturday, 65 to 61. Close win for them. Saginaw, or Grand Valley beat uh, Wayne State, 79 to 60. And of course, we got the dub 75 to 67 over the Lakers of Lake State. There you go. That was impressive how fast you just ran through that. That was pretty yeah, impressive. Yeah, no problem. So, but Want with, that standings real quick? Yeah, I was about to say, when you look at the standings right now, the Bulldogs are in, I wouldn't necessarily prime position, but I think now with this win, we now have distanced ourselves into that more, that middle road of the pack, but we're mm-hmm. not out of it going two games this weekend um, from moving up potentially in the standings here this weekend. Yeah, we got a chance. Grand Valley and Michigan Tech. Uh, Grand Valley's up on top 15-1 record overall in conference. Michigan Tech right Behind them was 17 games played, one more than the Lakers. Uh, they're 14 and three, though. Parkside is sitting at 11 and five in third place. Saginaw Valley's at 10 and six. Northern Michigan right behind them at 10 and seven. We're sitting pretty with a 500 overall record in the conference, eight and eight. Wayne State's at six and ten, and then three and thirteen is shared record by Purdue Northwest and Lake State, and then one and fifteen for Davenport. But you can never count the Panthers out. No, you cannot. They have spoiled us before a la men's game last year. So speaking of the men's, we'll hop over to them um, here as well. Another win for them that now makes it uh, quite a few in a row that they've strung together. Four straight um, since that Purdue Northwest win back in February 4th. They've been playing some pretty solid basketball. Yesterday was a different kind of game. And it definitely, you could tell watching that game that it was not necessarily the most fluent flowing, perfect basketball game that you would be looking at. But you really just need to know that Solomon Oreg yeah, was name, him. One name, one name is really all you got to know. He was him. Solo he was a guy. bucket getter. Solo was him. On Saturday, 38 points um, on 15 to 25 shooting. He was the man to get the ball to, and he certainly delivered uh, as well as getting five boards um, for the Bulldogs. Dwapo Linka had seven rebounds as well um, in his starting role. Ben Davidson also in double figures with 10, uh, and then Jimmy Scholler adding three as well. Nine boards as well um, for Michael Bingham uh, coming on in the starting lineup for the Bulldogs. So that, really a good display, I think, overall, just being able to grit out this game because Lake State threw a lot of wrenches um, at us, especially. I mean, they had a lot of good offense, especially from Bassett and Eberling. But I think when you saw how we played really well defensively, um, I think that there was a lot of promise, especially in that uh, in that second half a little bit because Lake State, they kept coming back, coming after us a little bit, chunk by chunk there in mm-hmm. that fourth quarter. I mean, you saw the lead would get stretched out, then it get kind of chipped back away. Um, and then really, I think especially it was, I think about four, four points, I believe it was with about, uh, 1340 to go. And then we started extending it. We got it to 11, mm-hmm. we got it up to 10. And then they would be, I think at one point it was up to, I believe about 18 or 16, I think with like four minutes to go. And that was pretty much the icing on the cake, um, to really hold off the Lakers in this one and move, uh, up in the conference standings to sole position of number Yay. one, I believe I will double check that here in just a second, but, uh, right, I got you. I think Solomon uh, definitely. No, 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 we're not. We're not. Well, we are tied in conference record with Parkside at twelve and four overall. Oh, so they won. I thought overall, I heard they like, lost on Saturday. Sorry, twelve and four conference record, but overall we have two more wins than them. Correct. Yeah, but then I had one last game. But Parkside did win on Saturday. Then okay, because I heard something yeah, different, won. which was I should have probably looked before. So that is my you fault. Good, for man. Now. You You're good, not brother? stat checking myself. Good, Joe's man. my stat checker here. We might as well no, go right, right to the scoreboard the, for you. Scoreboard, if we want. Uh, okay, let's roll. I hit the wrong button. I oh hit boy, the wrong button. We in the wrong spot. All right, one second. Hold up. Sorry. Hold, Hold up. up. Wait a minute. I gotta scroll all the way down. All right, we're good. So Thursday, February 16, 2023, Michigan Tech in a nail biter, 71 to 70. They get the home win over Purdue Northwest. Wayne State beat Davenport, 68 to 63. Parkside fell to Northern Michigan. They're one game behind uh, getting to that top spot in the Gleak as well, 73 to 47 win over Parkside. 80 to 93 loss for the Lakers against Saginaw Valley. That's a big time win for the Cards there. Uh, Purdue Northwest took on Northern Michigan on Saturday, starting off that little Saturday game slate. 84 to 78 loss going to the Pride there. We beat 
Lake State, 72 to 58. Huge for the program. Grand Valley State beat Wayne State, 71 67. Hate to see it. Parkside beat Michigan Tech, 76 58. Big bounce back win for them in Saginaw Valley. Kept the train rolling over Davenport, 95 to 90 in a close, high scoring game. Gotcha. So I had Michigan Tech and Parkside scores backwards yeah, in my head. So. Flip flip. But that puts us tied with Parkside going into the final week. So yeah, rough show of it from Parkside. Run on uh, a little bit of a little bit of a slip up stretch over yeah, the last couple of games, little, but twenty four. What is that? Twenty four. Yeah, that's a nearly thirty point loss. Ah, uh, that was Northern that, Michigan the first. That's tough. Yeah, that was kind of the way that our game in Kenosha <laughs> went though as well. I think we lost, I believe, by fifteen. I think in that game yeah, we just weren't ourselves like that. that game. And Parkside came out um, with something to Boy. prove. And I think that just happens in the nature of basketball. I mean, especially any team There's you play be, on. Man. Yeah, it just really does sometimes be kind of tougher than it normally should be like just the flow of the game feels off your shot and your pass and the offense feels off your defense feels a little bit shaky uh and those are the kind of the oh, games weird. where it kind of felt like that a little bit especially in the first half i mean 30 to 27 this game was a halftime i think that can kind of show you how really sluggish yeah. really kind well, of scrappy game it was at the start but then we started really kind of clicking down the stretch and then when we made that run that's when you knew we were going to win that game with that grit well, even so, I mean, if you look at it, this is one of the first games where we haven't had three guys in double digits. No. Like, I can't really remember the last game where, like, Michael or Jimmy, like, or even Ethan didn't, Ethan didn't score this game. No. I can't remember the last time he did that. That was one of the games where, like, we got probably pretty lucky that Solomon popped off for how well he did, and Ben was able to kind of pick up the slack in other areas. I mean, he still went two for 10, so not the best area, or sorry, uh, over two from three, sorry, two for 10 from field goals mm -hmm. is what I meant to say. But to be able to play that well, um, or sorry, that poor, but still be able to get the win, I think that's a promising sign because even this late in the season, you don't want those games, but if they come up, you got to be able to deal with it and have that ability to tackle that adversity and to be able to do that against a team like Lake state who has been pretty much spoiler to everybody so far this season. I can't, I don't really know anybody that they haven't beat yet so far. Cause they beat Parkside. I know. And they beat Northern. I'm pretty sure too. Right. Uh, if I remember correctly, yes, maybe a quick little deep dive. I think so. Yeah. No. Yeah. They did. They did. Okay. They did. We so don't want to double on, check. They've been like all the top five teams in the conference so far. That's a tough, tough thing to ask for, especially yeah. go into their place and be able to get that win and grit it out. I mean, that's pretty solid, solid looks. I mean, you can really be happy with that and get some momentum going in next week. Yeah, so it's certainly going to be some big games coming up this weekend. Davenport to start it up Thursday over in Caledonia. Davenport. Women's at 5.30 and men's at 7.30, I believe, followed up Saturday. Ooh, big ones. GV at Allendale. Going to be a fun matchup both sides with just going to be some powerhouse basketball uh, going to be on display in Allendale coming up. That'll be a 1 o'clock game for the women, followed by a 3 o'clock game for the men's there in Allendale. Be sure to show up and support the final regular season stretches for these teams going into the conference tournament. Mm -hmm. Anyway, turning over now into hockey, we'll keep this one a little shorter than normal just because this was an off weekend and Tough I think we all weekend, can boys. firmly agree that we have... That ain't us, man. No, not that us ain't us. That not ain't us. us. We'll, we'll be able to bounce back. This was one, literally, this was the worst time... For us to have a game like this. Yeah. Because I'm gonna, I, wanna, I don't want to say that we're going to kiss the chances of home ice goodbye because we're not. Made it a lot harder. It just made it literally there's only one possible chance that we'll be able to get home ice. Because we need to sweep Lake State. We need Northern yep. to lose. We need Bemidji to lose. And that's a tall order seeing who they got to play this week. I'm going to pull it up. My computer just died. So I got to rock this out on the microphone. Oh, the of the no. Yeah, rookie mistake. Forgot the charger on the old uh, on the old bedroom. So, yeah, man. I just got a $700 piece, or $700 piece of equipment that does not do anything. That is unfortunate there. Play Love the that for me. But, yeah, I think when you looked at how this team played, uh, I mean, Northern Michigan for one played so there's such a heavy offensive team. I know we brought that up really in the preview. They absolutely came out heads on fire, skates on fire, just absolutely put full pedal, 
full throttle to our defense in that first period of both nights. And we just couldn't really handle it that much. And there was obviously some bad puck luck involved with mm-hmm. that. Um, we had some good opportunities, especially um, in the second game where um, they were able to get out on top. But then right, right after you saw Shouties go on the power play and you're like, okay, here we go. And we're right back in it. And then obviously they scored two more. And then I think it kind of felt back in there that it was kind of be one of those nights once again. But uh, I mean, it just really seemed like a little bit of a, a little bit of a sluggish start, I guess you could say. I mean, obviously, um, I think that one of the weird, like the, I mean, you, you, the way the game ended too, I mean, you had the minors and the roughings at the very end of the game. And I think that just kind of capped it all. Very frustrating weekend overall from this team, because just like we mentioned, this is not, that was not the way that the team has played all year. They really had the worst time for their worst games. And I wouldn't call it necessarily um, bad in effort, but just it wasn't their night and you it could was just a struggle all the way around. Yeah, absolutely. And it was really a tough go around um, to see them really just be a very good hockey team and just not play very good hockey this weekend when it mattered. So I'm sure that was a little punch in the mouth. Hopefully we get back on track. We can sweep Lake state and give ourselves a chance this weekend for senior day. And I could almost definitely promise you that this team's going to be playing their absolute most motivating going into this weekend here um, before CCHA playoffs. But some of the goal netters from this weekend, especially um, in Saturday's three goal game um, here for the Bulldogs, uh, certainly getting to see the the success overall um, this season has been very promising. Um, you could definitely say from Travis Shouty, you had two goals on Saturday's game for one in the first period on the power play uh, and then 11:48 in the third period uh, then you saw Tyler Schlepp be able to find the back of the net um, at the end of the third period there um, McGrath Dirks Nardicia and Brad Merrick as well as Schleppi and Evan now getting assists on those ones and I think certainly when you saw that in the Friday game I think you saw a little bit of promise when it came to those setups and able to find the back of the net at some point, but defense just seemed very overwhelmed all weekend. And that was something um, that we were looking when we were really going into this game and previewing was, can we stop them when they're going to come out with an absolute full throttle offense? Cause that's how they play. They play full throttle. They play absolute fast paced, no breaks so hard that you either have to put them in a complete halt and then you have the momentum or they're going to kind of just continue to pound you and pound you offensively. Cause that's mm-hmm. where their strength is. They're not a strong defensive team and they're willing to commit penalties for how aggressive they are, but it just worked out in their favor at home this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. And the way the CCHA is shaking out right now, there could be heavy implications because, because, because I sound like I'm from Brooklyn, man, because, <clears throat> because the teams in fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh, have a possibility of basically having a huge mismatch all the way around. Bemidji State is at 36 points. Northern Michigan is at 33. We are also at 33. And St. Thomas is at 29. Whoa. If St. Thomas has a possibility of sweeping Bemidji State, and they are playing Bemidji State, I believe, on the road. No, at home, I think. At home. At home. home. So they got a solid (laughs) chance to sweep here. And they will be all the way up to 35 points. The Wildcats, Northern Michigan, is playing Bowling Green, I believe. So we need Bowling Green to sweep that. And then if Bowling Green sweeps that, sweeps that and gets six, and Michigan Tech loses, then they'll be tied for that spot in number two. Possibility. If we are able to sweep this weekend against Lake State, then we will jump all the way up to 39 points and we'll have locked that. But we need Bemidji State to lose both, Northern Michigan to lose lose at least one, and we will have that home ice locked. But that means a lot of good teams playing bad and a lot of bad teams playing good. That is a bonkers combo to think about. In one one weekend, one, two, three, four, five, six teams could switch up. Yeah, that is crazy to think about here. Maybe seven if Michigan Tech comes in clutch and sweeps Minnesota State. Yeah, that'll be very interesting to see. Wild. I mean, just to think about I mean, for two, like for <clears throat> four teams, there's a potential for home ice. Theoretically, yeah. then, yeah, there right? Is. There, because I mean, if if you really look at it, well, uh, does Saint Thomas have a technical Saint chance? Saint Thomas though? does not. I don't think they do. They could move but up. They to got a chance five. to play f- uh, worst, a uh, quote unquote worst team. Right, right. They'll move up from six there to could five. Be a chance that we face Saint Thomas in the playoffs if we sweep this weekend. Right, and then if they sweep. But they have to sweep Bemidji, and I don't. And think Northern's got to lose, and Northern's got to lose at least one. 
So it is technically possible. It's, t- it's, possible, it's a tall order, but it is possible. It's going to start with us winning two. And if we can't do that, then playoff home heist is kind of out of the question. But yeah, I do think that we have played good on the road this year. Obviously, this last weekend is a is a little bit of a shaky uh, viewpoint from really quick looking at the sample size of the season. Because, I mean, we do have played well at some other places, you know, Minnesota State sweeping in Mankato. And we were able to beat Bowling Green down in Ohio. So I think those are positive ones. But obviously, as of late, I think it's better when we have home heights based off mm-hmm. of this last weekend. But is, uh, is playoffs two out of three each series? I believe so, yeah. Okay, sick. Yeah, two out of three. So even if you get if you even you get punched in the mouth one night, you can still come yeah, back was, and get two in a row. Okay, that's what I thought. So I was, is it a Friday, Saturday, too? Sunday? Uh, I believe so. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or is it Thursday, Friday? Uh, it might be Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Could be Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Not totally sure. We'll have to double check Maybe, that here. Going, brother. Yeah. So it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. I mean, it's certainly gonna be a wild end to the season, especially in the CCHA. Everybody makes a playoff, so everybody has a chance, regardless. Yeah. And we're obviously talking about all these matter. all these numbers and all these combinations and all these analytics. Well, I mean, last year, I mean, Lake State made the tournament. They won the uh, CCHA. The, yeah, the regular well, season tournament or the. Conference tournament. Yeah. They got a bid. Yeah. Cause I was about to say they basically went from where were they at? <laughs> they this, were like uh, fourth or fifth. Uh, well, CCHA standings 2022. Or not even, I don't think at that point. Uh, I don't know. To be honest, one sec. Let's let me look up. Let me let homeboy look it up. Um, they were at near the bottom, I think. And then they just went on a tear all of a sudden and just won every single game. Cause they beat Minnesota state. I think in the final, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So I looked at the 2022 Mason cup playoffs here and it was, um, in the 2022, it was Lake state or no Lake state lost the first round to Northern Bemidji Four. state. Lake State won it though one year, didn't they? Was it two years ago? Maybe that was two years ago, the one you were thinking Dang. of. Dang. Yeah, because memory is not serving me right. Yeah, well, you had a steel trap mind, man. You do usually have a steel trap mind. So maybe maybe they got to clean out. Maybe no, no, clean my family does have bit. a history of dementia. So maybe that's already kicking in. Oh, gosh. That was- <laughs> Side note, did you know Bruce Willis got diagnosed with dementia? I did hear that. Yeah. So sad for him. That is sad. Bruce doesn't deserve that. Bruce be. Yeah, last year was Minnesota State. Uh, they they ran the table. They beat Bemidji State, who upset Michigan Tech. That was a big upset at that oh, point. Yeah. And then um, Northern Michigan um, beat Lake State in th- uh, in a three, um, and they were paired up to a five to play Minnesota State, and they got absolutely mm-hmm. walloped um, in that one. But I think if I can actually double check this here, um, I think you can actually be able to see that there was some upsets in the because there was not necessarily. I mean, there were some other upsets in the, like the tournament last year. Like Michigan didn't make it. Everybody thought that they were going to go wild, right? In the tournament as a whole, but Minnesota Duluth didn't make it too far. Yeah, because I think when you look back at a lot of these, um, when you looked back at a lot of these other tournaments, you've seen a lot of the, especially in hockey in general, you've seen a lot of these upsets, especially like in the final four, the Frozen Four, I should say. Um, but I think you definitely have a lot of those teams where you, when you go into these matchups, you look at the first two times these two teams matched up, obviously playing um, in one's home ice and the other's home ice um, during the season. You look back at a lot of those numbers. And I'm sure we'll get to that one if whenever whoever we play based off of what happens this weekend, you still have a brand new slate. And that comes with March Madness. It comes with any tournament. It's a blank slate, right? You're all in all. That's the biggest thing. You're zero and zero going in the tournament. It's a whole new season. Postseason starts now. Scrap everything you did in the regular season. Well, I shouldn't say scrap it. Take away the negatives and just go out in the positives going into that tournament and see if you can finally find a way to win. Um, but I think it'll be very interesting to say the least here. But Senior Day is coming up this weekend for hockey. Friday, 707 puck drop. Saturday, 507 puck drop here to compensate for all the senior day activities taking place at Angle Glavin. Should be a fun weekend all the way around. Make sure you get your tickets at Ferris State Bulldogs. Yes, sir. Dot com. Anyway, moving on over now, track in oh, action, rapid fire now. Saginaw Valley State tune-up meet. And uh, we call it a tune-up because it's very low-key and obviously uh, making those fine-tuned adjustments going into conference. But one particular individual that we'll mention here in just a minute, I think exceeded that to the absolute show. fullest show. Show. based on this weekend. But um, some notable results there from Saginaw Valley. Um, I mean, four first place 
five runner up performances as we noted in the recap. I think that definitely shows we that I think we dominated that meet overall. Um, Tariq Brett was fantastic in the 60s, 6, 8, 9. He's only one hundredth of a second off top five all time. Ralph Donaldson also had uh, a very good performance. Uh, Josiah Flora was third in the 200 meters, believe ran a personal best for him, um, as well as Tyrese Beetle fourth in the 400 as he still comes back to injury prayers. So that's all healed for Tyrese and company, um, as well as Mason Mullick was eighth in the 60 meter hurdles in his freshman season. Uh, Ethan Hamilton placing 11th in the 800 meters. Uh, Jackson Helmer 10th in the mile running a personal best for him. Uh, the 3K was the race that I ran with along with a lot of other guys. Dan Hardesty, Noah Griffith, those guys went bonkers. 844 and 846. I was right behind with 851, followed by Brennan Kearney and Casey Bowman, uh, 52 and 53. We had a nice train there and we were rolling um, to get towards that 850 time spot, which was good. Um, David Duvall, third overall in the long jump as well as Josiah Flora, third in the triple jump. Um, Bryce George, a fellow football player, uh, plays fifth in the shot put. Very good performance from him, as well as Kyle Druyard, fifth in the weight throw. Uh, and the 4x4 four four teams finished, I believe, second, and I want to say third overall uh, for men's and women's. And speaking of the women's on that side, Danae Felchposch, 800-meter winner, 214 personal best time, and I believe that puts her now um, one second off of the top five fair state all time. And only, I believe it was a 10th of a second off the net and the NCAA provisional For standard, real? which was that close. She was that close. I know Dang. she wanted it so bad. Um, Daisy England was also fifth in that race. Whitney Farrell, uh, won the three K followed by Sydney Kubiak and Hannah Brock. Those three were in, worked really well together at the front of the pack, 10, 20, 21 and 22 respectively. Um, Landis Stroud sixth overall at 10 35, um, as well as a lot of other personal bests from a lot of the, um, upper and lower classmen in that race as as well, right behind Abby Winkle was the runner up in the 459.12, um, as well as Michaela Muth was 11th in that race. Um, the mile also saw a lot of great times, as well as Claudia Wilkinson winning the high jump with a 158 jump. Emma Stefan runner up in the weight throw, as well as Rebecca Marvin placing sixth, and then as well, Watkins ninth and Marvin eighth in the weight throw. So there's all the results there, but the one that was skipped over purposefully uh, was, a, a, sweet Brandon. was a score record holder. And Whoa. I mean, it was absolutely fantastic. We'll get the applause button. Donis Harris is the newest mile school record. He ran, get ready for this drum roll, 406 in the mile. He ran a four minute, six Dang. seconds mile. He traveled 1,609 meters in four minutes and six seconds, ladies and gentlemen. That is a new Ferris State School record, national D2 provisional standard hit. And it was absolutely fantastic to see that live. And I mean, got to have a shout out as well to Andrew Shaffley for the pacing duties that he had in that race, as well as running the 800 and the 200. Um, so, I mean, it was absolutely phenomenal to watch, um, getting to be able to, to really photograph that race as well um, as just kind of being a part of that whole thing. Regardless if you were even, I mean, obviously with Fair State affiliation, of course, obviously the other teams probably didn't know about this. Um, I'm sure they might have had an idea after figuring it out and putting two and two together, but just being a part of that was so cool. And for a guy like Donis, who has worked his butt off and has really been one of the, the grittiest and hardest workers in this program for quite some time and being able to see him capitalize on his final indoor season and be able to hit that mark was it was just absolutely breathtaking to me. Yeah. Like I never really realized, obviously you're in the moment you're cheering for him. You're like, yes, let's go. And you're giving him hugs and high fives and taking pictures. And then you sit after, and I know I was doing this when I went back into um, the other room that was outside of the track. And then I was just like, I just witnessed the fastest man to ever run in, in our Jersey in that event. And what a prestigious event in the mile. Yeah. Isn't that wild? That is incredible. And I think it was super cool. Donis deserves all of the credit as well. Um, as of course, Andrew Shaffley just gets half the credit as well. Maybe even the full credit too. Pacing's a hard duty. And boy, that guy um, has put in Donis's Instagram story, I believe, the human metronome. He was absolutely perfect. And I will tell a story about this here before we get into the other sports to close it out. But they wrote down all the splits beforehand of what exactly Schaff was going through to get right on pace for that record breaking mark. And they wrote it on a piece of journal paper from actually one of the freshmen um, on the bus ride, wrote it all out. And then Shaffley wrote those times. They did all the math, got everything down to a T for the 300, each hundred meter split. And then Shaffley wrote those on his hand or not his hand, his arm. He wrote them on his arm by his watch and he hit 
I'm pretty sure at least six, if not every single one of them within a tenth to two tenths of a second. Perfectly. It was incredible the fact that they mathematically computed it right and they got literally right on every single one. It was absolutely crazy. It was absolutely perfect. Everything was perfect. And that's Dang. what you saw a school record at Saginaw on that's Friday night. Sick, dude. I mean, that's fantastic. wild. Fantastic stuff. I can't say more about this event. I know we got other things we got to get to, but shout out to Donis. Shout out to Shaft. Shout, shout out, out to Donis. everybody, Coach Kelsch, everybody involved uh, that helped make this whole event possible. Certainly a memory that I will never forget. Indoor championships next weekend, Saturday, Sunday from Saginaw Valley for the Kliak Indoor Crowns up for grabs. Going to be yes, fun. Sir. It's going to be fun. We'll get our assignments here, see who's running what, and going to be a fun weekend up ahead. Anyway, finishing out the Fair State Sports report softball began their season um, over this last weekend traveling to Nashville um, for what's supposed to be six games turned into five of course um, with an early weather delay cancellation um, I believe on Thursday night or maybe it was Friday night whatever the first day uh, of competition was but um, certainly got the rust off and um, hoping to get back here of course coach Schumann his first season um, at the helm of this Bulldog program not the greatest start with the wins and losses column but this is all the process right these are the first times you're getting Games, you're getting outdoors um, and playing a lot of these really, really good teams. I mean, I looked up some of these teams and they were very good. We we're able to get one win over this weekend against a good Kentucky Wesleyan team, but um, certainly just saw a little bit of that struggle here early on, a lot of errors, but that's the stuff you see at the beginning of the season. So obviously we're not going to panic as of yet. So um, the program has still lost a lot of the good seniors from last year. Um, not necessarily saying good and bad seniors or anything, but a lot of that leadership was lost last year and they're still building that back. Um, so that's going to take time, um, especially with a lot of the younger players. So um, you get you take that process, all the good, you can replace the bad, and then that's what they'll hope to do uh, coming before this weekend. They'll be going to the Lewis Dome Invitational in Rosemont, um, for uh, quite a few games coming up uh, here. They'll have another, uh, I believe, five game slate um, for the Lewis Dome Invitational. And then obviously a lot of the teams, um, especially tennis and softball, um, will begin their spring break games down in the great state of Florida. But yeah, over- 12, 12 games coming up in Florida. Oh, uh, yeah. A lot of games wow. coming up in Florida. And I believe tennis has just as much as well. So a lot of That's Bulldogs insane. will be competing in the Florida, state of Florida, Florida. I almost said Florida state. state, the Sunshine State. That's the one I was going for. Thank you, Joe. Gotcha, I was man. trying to figure that one out while I was in my head. Outside but, of Orlando. Yeah. So, to me. yeah. So, if you're in town, go cheer on the Bulldogs while you're down there. By we, chance, we, you're in Orlando. Yeah. If you're down there, we know half of you guys are already going to Florida. They're listening to this podcast. So, uh, I unfortunately will not be probably going to Florida over spring break because ah. I've learned, but I'll be might be going later in the month. So, uh, and I know, Joe, I think Tough it's looks, on, man. you're on your way to Florida, right? No, for, for spring what? break. I'm going to Nashville, man. Ah, it's Nashville. That's right. So we would be unfortunate to miss as yeah. they went this last weekend. But just barely missed it, man. I guess you can enjoy Nashville like a regular, regular. non athletic staff person. Yeah, like a NARP. A NARP. Non athletic regular person. Yeah. As you athletes say. Yeah, we do say that. I still have a year. Sorry, I can't change who I am. Oh, gosh. Here we go. I. I am so not going to be good in- enough for you, Mr. Athlete. Okay, calm Sorry, down. Sorry, I don't got a busy schedule all the time. Calm down mm. right now. Calm down. The Sorry fact- that my sleep schedule is okay. Mm. Sorry that I don't got to go to training at 6 a.m. Mm. Sorry that I'm imperfect to you. Mm. Why do you keep Mr. saying this? Athlete. Things? Yeah, I'm just going to keep slamming this button until you stop. But no. Uh, then the term NARP is used. Just man, I don't by really, athletes. I don't really care about the NARP thing. I was just joking around. I know you were, but I don't like the when the people uh, associate NARP with having the the athletes being necessarily different than a regular person. Everybody's got everybody's got different schedules, man. Yeah, like it I don't mean, matter if you don't do a sport or what. Like it's no, yeah, like I don't, deal. I don't care. Like I like, I like the term NARP because it's funny. Because like as a fellow yeah, it's a athlete, funny thing. Like, we talk gonna, about those I'm days. Not throw, throw anybody like out of the way or whatever. Oh no, no, I know you weren't. I'm just saying this as a general all the way around. For I know some people yeah. that think like NARP is something above like the standard thing. of a normal person that because we use that term, yeah, which yeah. I think is a load of crap. But I think like we joke around of that as the same of like. 
you know how like the whole the whole standard of when you grow up say, oh man, I'm getting old and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. You use that stereotype all the time and you see you use that phrase, but it's the same with like an athlete. We use NARP kind of in that way of, oh, one day we're going to be a NARP and everything's <laughs> going to be gone and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, but I don't like when people would saying like, yeah, you guys say you're NARPs, but you really don't feel like you're a regular person and all this negativity. And I just say, you know what? Mm. No, stop that stop. negativity. We're the same people and we still have fun. I just competed in sports in my four years and you chose to focus on school. We both did probably a majority of both, but we just did them in different fashions. And that's really all you're that matters. Be- you're just better than everybody, man. No, we're not. Calm, calm down. Can we, can we just move <laughs> on before I get wild Let's up again? Out. I just tried to calm down for five seconds and now I'm back up again. Anyway, Joe, a lot, bad, of, man. a lot of good tennis this weekend. And I guess you might as well start it before I and eventually just lose my mind here about talking about NARPs. Yeah, great job, tennis. I mean, my bad. I've, my, my computer died. It's tough to go on my he, phone. He is struggling I, over I'm here on t- his phone, which is all for I'm you also guys, rocking on also rocking on Ferris Wi-Fi, which is pretty booty cheeks. I it is. Uh, it's pretty terrible. Because they switched over, like, trying to do... Not great. It's kind of... It's it's poop is what it really is. Not I'm great, not, I'm not yeah. I'm not going to lie. Pretty, pretty garbage. Let me scroll this bad boy down. Okay, great job. Tiffin and Walsh. Big sweep for the women and big big sweep for the men's too, right? Uh, not, uh, men's got the sweep. Women's did not. They fell to Tiffin, but still we got a sweep against Walsh. One out of two against Tiffin. It was still- well, I, I have clicked on the- I did. I clicked on men's. My fat fingers. Once again, phone is killing me right now. Oh boy, this is rough. Keep it rolling. Okay, here we go. Joe's having technical problems, and we're going to keep moving here. But overall from this weekend, uh, didn't get the – or we got the doubles point in the men's game, which that was the crucial difference, especially down the yeah, stretch. Um, and I mean, especially um, freshman Asunja Dumbe had a fantastic final pairing that would end up getting the win in that sixth singles pairing. But – uh, I think you saw a lot of those top players from Tiffin. I mean, they're they're nationally ranked for a reason um, on the men's side. But I mean, we were able to fight. We were able to they're claw. Like crazy, got dude. that doubles point, and that's really what got us to win at the. Or excuse me, we didn't actually get the the men's point, and that's why the singles was even better, especially in those lower pairings. So we won the the final the final four pairings, and that was what was in crucial here. Uh, while on the women's side, um, you saw it lay out a little bit differently. Obviously, both of those teams top um, in the GMAC for a reason. They're very talented programs and have been powerhouses for quite some time. So obviously, that's a tall task going in, especially at their place. Um, but the women, I think there was uh, still quite a few um, you, a lot of good things you could pull the way, obviously taking on um, some really good competition on the road is certainly something um, that you see really quite a bit some time uh, over the season. You kind of go back to a lot of these games of the process of, okay, we're t- we're facing off against a lot of these good Gleak teams. And all, especially once we get to the tournament of remember this time when you played this team at this place, you can bring some of that stuff. And that's what these weekends are all about. And obviously we're still early on in this season. So there's still a lot to go around um, when it comes to really kind of breaking down a lot of these matches. And obviously you can see the final score lines and you can tell uh, if a team's good or not, but, those are really the things that um, come when you especially get into the later months of April and you can start playing these clay tournaments and you start using a lot of these things and you can work on a lot of those things. So uh, a little bit of a learning curve um, for the women against Tiffin, but they bounced right back. And I think that was the most important thing, beating Walsh um, on the road, 5-1 the final for the women. Uh, men were able to take care of business as well in big fashion. So saw a lot of good things um, in that comeback Saturday. Uh, I shouldn't call it a comeback, but I should say a bounce oh, back, I think back. is the more uh, appropriate word. So, yeah. but great overall performances. I mean, the doubles especially was a major improvement. We were able to win the doubles points uh, after losing them on Friday. And I think that was a big bounce back point for this team and coach Doran's squad. And still with a lot of that depth, I know we talked to Parker Nolan last week. These teams are ready to get back, ready to roll. And first time getting outdoors and, or excuse me, competing, I should say indoors, especially getting to outdoors later on. Uh, you're still learning a lot of those things. You're still really breaking the rust off, obviously, with a couple games now under your belt. Uh, But it's really going to kind of go back over spring break. And then I think that's when I think you could really start considering that season now in full swing going ahead. Yeah, absolutely. And you still got a little bit till uh, that second. Like you said, yeah, uh, spring break to kind of worry about too to get that kind of going. And then you're going to be able to rock it out with some other Florida teams that you got to be taking on. So, I mean, you really can't complain about this weekend. Nice bounce back win, big split for the men. So, honestly, Chalk it up as a W. Okay. 
There you go. Chalk it up as a W this weekend. Joe, we get a certified Joe victory sound bite. That's what we need for, for chalk our it sound up. pad. We need, chalk it up as a W. We need to chalk it up as a W chalk sound a w. effect, which you can vote on our Spotify episodes. If you don't Ooh. know that you actually can put input on this show oh, really? outside of social media. Yeah, Joe, did y'all know about oh, that? Oh, real? Oh, yeah. No, you're just you're just playing just, on the fans oh, here. Yankees, I know, I know. But you can go on Spotify. If you're especially a Spotify listener, if you're Apple and Amazon, it's are unfortunate, but you can go to Spotify and we make sure to put out questions with the episodes and you can give your feedback so that we can get give this show us. better going forward, especially now that we're on the radio. We're taking all the feedback we can get because we yes, want to make yes, sure going for you guys. And that's going to do it for the Fair and State Sports Review. Finish out the show, touch up on the NBA All-Star game that happened this weekend and certainly a little bit of a different look. Got to see some different faces in new places, but still back on the All-Star floor. Uh, the game itself, very interesting. And I know Joe's got some uh, opinions that he'll drop here in just a second. But I mean, I thought the overall weekend went pretty solid. Salt Lake City seemed like um, they really benefited off of hosting the All-Star game for the first time in a while. Um, I mean, obviously, Mac McClung, one of the big stories, huge Save dunk, contest, dunk contest performance. Saved and, it. Oh, yeah. I think there's a lot to get into. But first, Joe, I know that you were talking about this off air, and I wanted to really bring this on air, I think, because I think it's really prominent of the All-Star game now kind of starts to feel like the Pro Bowl a little bit. It has lost a lot of its draw, I feel like, to a lot of people. Like for me, I'm a big proponent, and no All-Star game does this anymore. It's like, all-Star games should have, like, something to play for. You know what I mean? Like, baseball used to have it where if you won or whatever team won, got home field advantage for the World Series, you know? And that was a big thing. Now they don't have that anymore, so now it's just kind of just like a, hey, get together type play thing. You got to have something to give these players some incentive because I don't want to watch a basketball game that's 93 to 98 or 92 at halftime. Yeah, because there's no defense being played. It's just a, hey, I'm gonna go down and throw a lob up, and it's gonna be dunk after dunk and stuff like that. It's not gonna be good basketball to watch. You're just watching it because all these guys are on the same team. What I want to see is all these guys like bring the games in the off season where you have like the ones that we saw like at those what was it the LA Fitness where where Jay Cole was playing with them. Oh they yeah, like, those pickup those runs were intense pickup runs, and you see here like you don't see that at all. And it's like, it's kind of made it to where it's more of kind of like a social event. It's like a social hour rather than a basketball game that people want to watch. And the worst part about it is if you look back to what it used to be back in like the 80s, the 90s, when Kobe was like near his start. And even like in the early 2000s, you had teams that were built up and you had like actual all-stars that wanted to play and, you know, were actually had a solid game of basketball going on. It wasn't a blowout of like 180 to 190. It was a high intensity game from start to finish and guys wanted to win and wanted to play well. Now you just got guys who are just there because they want that extra little incentive bonus that they get from making the all-star team. And then after that, they don't want to do anything. And that's been everything with the all-star weekend from, I mean, this year the dunk contest because our Mac McClung got saved, but dunk contests were garbage. Skill contests were garbage. As long as Steph's not shooting in the three-point contest, garbage. All, the All-Star game as a whole is garbage. Everything was just so lackadaisical and just so liquid, liquidated to where it's just like you can tell guys like wanted to be there, but they were just there to hang out with their friends. Yeah. Yeah. And really the biggest thing with having these All-Star weekend events, regardless across any sport, you want to see the best players play the best game all together on the best day. That's the all-star game. That's what That's they want to see. But now it's kind of turned into a, we're recognizing the all-stars and we're really recognizing and acknowledging the excellence they put together in their first part of the season. But then from there, it's kind of really kind of drawn itself out. And I think overall, um, I think the three point contest, I think the the dunk contests are still in semi good shape. I think I would agree with you that Mac McClung really brought the prominence of the dunk contest back for how well he had his performance mm -hmm. there in that Saturday night event. But I think when you look at how this whole game is put up as a whole, I think it just kind of feels like. We're starting to we're starting to implement a little bit. Um, I mean, especially the year um, when they honored Mamba, of course, in that yeah, All Star yeah. game. That was in a very electric experience. But now, it's kind of since that kind of passed a little bit, now we're starting to kind of fade away from that really kind of importance to play for. And I thought the 
especially with the MLB All-Star game. I'm glad you brought up that example, Joe, because I think that's what a lot of these players, why they played so hard. And obviously you could tell it was an All-Star game. Not all of them necessarily were like, yeah, this is a this is an important game, but I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to strain. I'm not going to put in 125% effort for an All-Star game because I got to compete with my team three yeah. days later. But I think something like that, at least gives you that incentive to keep yeah, playing because, that well. And obviously with a lot of that stuff now, you're just not seeing the same kind of intensity. Yeah, because if you're a guy, okay, so going back to baseball, so say like if I'm Aaron Judge and the Yankees have a chance to make the World Series, I'm going to go up. There's a chance where it's like 4-4 in the bottom of the eighth or something. I'm up at the bat. I'm looking to get a thing going. I'm looking to get a rally because I have the chance of having a game seven at home at home advantage is what it is. And if you give that incentive to some of those players who are higher up and in those teams that are in the hunt and have a good chance to make it to the NBA championship, World Series, whatever it may be, Stanley Cup or anything like that, you got a chance to really like set something up and be super cool and have a really great atmosphere. But now it's just kind of become a little thing where it's like, oh, it's the All-Star game. I'll watch the highlights tomorrow. Because yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to watch an All-Star game. No. I'm not going to waste two hours of my life watching a game where guys are just... Playing 50%, not even, just hanging out. Yeah, Jalen Brown called it a glorified layup line. Yeah, that's what it, it was. Because it, it was. You don't get any type of intensity, which is annoying. I yeah. I have, I have, All-Star games have just been so bad recently that I just have not even paid attention to them. Yeah, which I like the fact that they're playing for charity now, and obviously with Giannis and LeBron as the captains, obviously they're competing on behalf of Giannis and LeBron basically is how it feels. It's not necessarily a conference thing anymore. Yeah. So it's just kind of yeah. lost its way, and... Really, I, you just got to go back to it. Yeah, it's just lost its draw. Also, they need to bring back players wearing their actual jerseys. Ooh. Instead of like actual all-star jerseys, because those were so clean. When you got to see like so many different jerseys in one thing, you know, it was really cool. Mm -hmm. Because like you had the, you had like the guys wearing the home jerseys, which was white or were the, the away jerseys, which would be white or whatever. Yeah. But then the home team would be like a red, a purple, a green or something like that. It would be really yeah. cool. and. I don't know. So many things about the All-Star game that made the All-Star game what it was that we changed for no reason for some for some reason for some reason we changed it. I don't know why. And now it just makes it so you just want the old All-Star game back because it actually had meaning. Yeah, I think it's cool when you got to see like I I kind of like when we had um you like I think it was a couple years back we had like the um the white and the the black uniforms that had the logo of the team. Yeah, I like that. Front. I like that. I like that they representing their team. That's what I like because I feel like when because the thing that really bothers me is like you have like the the team Giannis and the team LeBron and it kind of just makes it feel like there's no like there's no external meaning outside of the game itself. You know, like that's what it really I thought was cool with. Uh, I mean, the MLB All Star Game because almost every every home in a way has a gray and a white and you have those teams wearing them. So obviously you're kind of unified as a group already, but then you still represent your team. I think that's cool. But when you start to bring in um, like a whole, like this whole, I know they're trying to revamp it and they're bringing in um, the whole, like the, the whole voting polls, the top two are picking the teams and they're mm -hmm. picking it before, which is very interesting. I thought doing the draft live was very interesting. Um, but I think it just, it's starting to just go away from what it used to be. And that historical part of the sport, I think is what makes it that good. Cause you're looking back at the years of man, you remember when Vince Carter was thrown down in the dunk contest mm -hmm. in his old Raptors purple uniform. Uh, and you're remembering all these memories of all these great dunk contests. Even in 2016, Aaron Gordon going at it with Zach Levine of all wild. those, those were incredible performances, <clears throat> but now you're kind of looking at them. Like we're not living up to that. Not necessarily that performance anymore. So how can we get back to that? And I think now they're starting to go and look at all these other extra avenues of let's have the, let's have two captains picking just like it's on the, like you're playing pickup out in the yard. Say, yeah. It's just like, just like schoolyard ball. But like I've seen more intense games of schoolyard basketball than right. like all-star game. Yeah. So whatever that takes, I think everybody yeah. wants to see. Um, I mean, and I think, Adam, I think Adam Silver will try to find a way to get it there, but just going to have some work to do over the next coming years, or you're going to lose the all-star game. Kind of like the pro bowl has really been lost this year. Yeah, absolutely. And I like Adam Silver as a GM, as a, um, 
commissioner. Like he's done really great things, but I feel like the all-star game as of recently is something that he's been really dropping the ball on. And I don't really know what he, I mean, he just kind of needs to listen to fans about what needs to get fixed, but I don't know. There's a whole bunch of stuff about NBA basketball. That I'm just getting annoyed about. Cause I mean, you got players who aren't going to try super hard because of load management and all that type of stuff. And it's tough. Yeah, maybe this is a time we start substituting for that in-game tournament that or mid-season tournament that we were talking about. I honestly about. would like that a little bit better. Yeah, honestly. Now we have some ideas brewing. I'm sure that oh, Mr. Silver's crew is certainly working on some stuff to improve the NBA All-Star game moving forward. But that's going to do it for today's episode. Thank you for tuning in, whether you're on any of our podcasting platforms as well. Make sure you subscribe on social media, dropping that fire content here yes, we are. over the next couple of weeks and months. Can't wait to see what this show has in store for all you guys for making this show possible. But absolutely. Until next time. Take care, everybody.